There are some marketers who give research its due share of seriousness and they spend a lot of uh, time, money and effort into research so that it can help them with their decision making. And then there are other marketers who like to act from their gut. They do almost little to no research and uh, they make their own hypothesis and take their own decisions. Both the approaches have their own merits and demerits. However, if you are someone who's decided to go ahead and conduct some research, you would really need to know a little bit about research design. Uh, this is true whether you are trying to conduct the research yourself or whether you plan to hire an external research partner to help you with the research. When you know the basics of research design, you can be much more informed and actually get better output from your research partner if you are working with one. In today's video, I'll be talking about three kinds of research design, and these are not the only ways in which research is designed. There are many other ways in which uh, research is designed. But uh, when you look at it through the lens of marketing research, these are some of the most common ways in which research is designed. However, I can understand that a lot of you might be curious to understand more about all the different kinds of research design options which are available. So what I've done is I've created a free downloadable document which is available on my website. You can click on the link in the description box below and you can access that document for free. So let's get started with today's video. My name is Rahul and I'm the creator of Business of Marketing and on this channel I share content which can help you earn a seat on the marketing decision table. In my previous video I spoke about setting the research objectives and writing the correct kind of a research brief. Once you have done that, the next thing to align before the research is actually conducted is the research design. So what is research design? Research design is the overall strategy that you want to use to carry out the different parts of your research study in a coherent and logical way so as to ensure that you are able to find the answers to the research questions or problems that you have. The plan should cover methods, collection, interpretation, analysis, discussion of data and information. All of these possible aspects need to be covered in that research design. If you are working with an external research partner, when you send them the research brief, what they come back with is a research proposal and the majority of the research proposal is actually explaining the research design. The other things which are also included in the same research proposal include things like costs and timings and other details. But there can be scenarios where you decide to conduct the research yourself or with your uh, market research team. And in that kind of a situation, it is important to know the different kinds of research design options which you can make use of so that you can get the right kind of output that you're looking at. The three different kinds of research design approaches that I'll be talking about in this video are exploratory research design, descriptive research design, and causal research design. I'll start with the exploratory research design also because it's something which I have used most extensively, and I'm sure a lot of you would have done so as well. So let's start by understanding what exactly is exploratory research design. Exploratory research is suited when not enough information is known about a problem, a topic, a trend, you know, from past knowledge that you might have. So it is like an investigative kind of an approach. And in marketing, it is used to get in-depth understanding about the why behind the symptoms or patterns that aren't self-explanatory. A lot of times you see, uh, you know, these trends and quantitative reports and you don't understand why something is showing as what it is showing. And that is where exploratory research can be extremely useful, where you can go and you can conduct a separate research to try and get into the details of what exactly is the reason behind it. Usually it is conducted prior to descriptive studies to develop them better, or it is conducted as needed when trying to understand the why behind a certain phenomena that you might be seeing. And while it is mostly conducted in a structured manner, enough exploratory work also happens in an unstructured way. Sometimes you're not actually aware that you're conducting exploratory research, but uh, that is fine as long as it is helping you in decision-making process. 
So there are things that you can understand and you cannot understand from exploratory research. So let's look at what those elements are. Exploratory research is great when you're looking for in-depth answers. It also is a great kind of research to approach when you want starting points to developing solutions or new ideas. It's also very useful when you want to gather background information about a subject, a problem, a trend, or understand its nature or causes. However, the trouble with exploratory research is that it is very time consuming and therefore expensive. And the results are usually based on a small sample size. And hence, it is hard to generalize it to a larger market or to a broader segment as such. Anyone in the field of marketing would probably at some point or the other would have conducted some form of exploratory research. I've tried to list out a lot of different ways in which exploratory research is uh, used in marketing. But this is again not extensive. There are many more ways in which it can be used. The most common or the most extensive uses for exploratory research are when it comes to a new product development, when you are trying to understand an advertising concept and uh, trying to understand how people are responding to it and why they are liking something or not. When you're trying to gather background information about a category or a consumer segment, before you actually go ahead and start a quantitative research, when you want to gather the perspectives from several experts, when you want to understand the causes behind the changes in marketing performance, these are all situations where exploratory research is used. The most common methods which are used when you are using an exploratory design is uh, in-depth interviews, focus group discussions, ethnographic research, and at the same time, you use a lot of projective and open-ended methods to conduct this kind of research. Let me talk about an example so that it's a little more clear to you. Uh, imagine a situation wherein in a particular region of your market, uh, the sales for your brand has gone down while the sales for a competitor brand has gone up. And you do your usual digging around and looking at the numbers. But after doing that also, you are not very clear as to what is the cause why that sales decline has happened. In such a situation, you might decide that you want to go in to the market and speak to a couple of people, some users of your brand, some lapses, some competition users, and you might want to ask them what is the reason why they are still using or they have stopped using or moved to a different brand. And uh, at the same time, you might decide that you want to have a couple of conversations with a few people in trade or with a few salespeople. And uh, this can give you a much better idea as to what exactly is going on in that region. And uh, this kind of an approach where you go and you try to dig the why behind a certain symptom which is visible is known as an exploratory research design. The next kind of research design is uh, known as descriptive. And as the name suggests, descriptive research is used to gain a general understanding about a particular phenomena, situation, or a population group. Think of descriptive research as a barometer, which kind of keeps a check on how things are going for your brand and the various aspects around your brand. It is used very commonly in marketing to understand the current situation or where things stand with respect to specific questions around the brand, its service, its quality, its perception, etc. And uh, this approach may use a wide variety of research methods and can deal with uh, multiple variables at the same time. And the moment you hear multiple variables, you're thinking quantitative research. And yeah, there is a lot of quantitative research involved in descriptive research design. However, there are things which descriptive research can and cannot tell you. So what is that? Descriptive research is great to gain a quantitative perspective of what, where, when, how, these kind of questions, where brands want to know how things stand about uh, you know, uh, their performance, about how people perceive them to be. However, if you understand the causes or the reasons behind certain occurrences, this kind of study will not really provide you with that. In the world of marketing, most brands use descriptive research by periodically conducting brand health tracks to understand how consumers think about them and the other brands in the category. It is also used to evaluate product and ad concepts before significant investments are made. The common methods used in this kind of research design include structured survey. You would have seen those questionnaires where there are predefined questions and predefined answers. 
And there are lots of questions which are like the Likert uh, type scale questions, which is like a scale of, uh, you know, one to five or one to something else. And the other way method which is used commonly is structured observations. Example, when people behave in a certain way in supermarkets and you are observing from CCTV cameras to try and understand where the flow of consumers is and how they are responding to the different changes that they make in the design of the supermarket. Let me give you an example to make this a little more clear. Imagine that you are a brand which exists in a category where you have a couple of competitors and uh, you really want to know where your brand stands as compared to the other brands which exist in that category. So as a result, you come up with a list of 20 to 25 attributes. These are things which motivate people to consider different brands in the category. And these could be functional attributes like, you know, taste or sweetness. Uh, these could be emotional attributes like makes me happy or makes me feel like sharing. Or these could be imagery led attributes such as uh, I look cool when I eat this or I look friendly when I eat this. In a descriptive research design, what you will do is you will conduct quantitative research using all of these attributes and ask people to rate your brand and your competitor's brand on the different attributes. And on the basis of that, you will get a good indication of what exactly is the reason or what motivates people to select your brand as opposed to the brands of the other competitors that exist. That kind of research design is an example of a descriptive research design. You would see that people have rated you very highly on it makes me look cool when I eat this, but you do not find out from descriptive research design the reason why they are calling your brand as a brand which makes them look cool. So for that kind of a requirement, you need to use an exploratory research design to try and understand and find out more. The next kind of research design is the causal research design. Causal research is also known as explanatory research and it is used to identify and understand the extent of the relationship between a cause and its outcome. Uh, it's like if X, then Y. Through this research, you try to understand how changing the independent variable, which is the cause, leads to a change in the dependent variable, which is the effect. It is also used very commonly in marketing to isolate and test various kinds of independent variables to find out the outcome they produce on the effect. However, there are things that causal research is good for and things that uh, you cannot actually achieve with causal research. So let's take a look at what those are. There are various situations where a series of causes or multiple causes lead to a certain kind of an effect. Using causal research design, you can try to isolate each of these variables and try to understand which one has the greatest impact on the effect. And once you have established the causal relationship, you can then dial it up or dial it down depending on what your marketing requirements are. However, the reality of causal research design is that it's extremely difficult to remove all the extraneous influences and to isolate all the different variables while you are doing the testing. Also, causality does not mean correlation. In the case of causal relationships, the cause must happen first, followed by the effect. One of the big uses of causal research is for the purpose of test market studies, where the sales impact of launching a new product idea is measured prior to launch. Testing multiple variations of a product with one variable being altered at different rates, testing various kinds of website designs with variations in one small element to isolate its impact on the time span, click-through rate, conversion, etc. Testing different price points to see which price point is leading to maximum usage. These are all different examples of how causal research design is used in marketing. The common methods used in this kind of research design include observational research, structured quantitative surveys, neuro research, testing in lab conditions, all of those. Causal research does sound a little theoretical and hard to understand. So let me take an example, a relatable example for you to be able to understand this concept really well. Let's try and look at McDonald's who wants to introduce a new burger. And this burger is a slightly healthier version of a burger. So they have already decided on all the different elements that go into the burger, which is like the patty, the sauce, the uh, the fresh ingredients, all of those have been decided. The only thing that they are trying to now decide or the one independent variable left to decide is the actual bun. 
So what they've done is they've created five different variations of this bun, each fluctuating between different levels of taste and uh, different levels of healthiness. And uh, what happens in this kind of a study is that you keep all the other variables the same, wherein the patty is the same, the sauce is the same, the fresh ingredients are all the same. The only thing that keeps changing every time you are testing it with a consumer is the bun. And you test the different burgers and you try and understand through this research which is the burger or which is the bun which gives you the best response that you're looking for. So you might be looking for a balance between which is the tastiest at the same time healthiest kind of a burger. And where that balance meets perfectly is the answer that you're looking for. This kind of a research design is a causal research design. I would encourage you to read about the other types of research design in the document which is available on my website. But you can already get a good sense of the different kinds of research designs which exist. At the same time, you also with experience will understand the different kinds of requirements for which different kinds of research designs are extremely well suited. In the real world, it is very common to use a combination of methods for the purpose of getting the right kind of research output that you're looking at. And what you would have also noticed is that how certain methods have inherent advantages at doing something, while other methods have advantages at something else, but they have their own drawbacks. And at the same time, there are different kinds of complexities involved with different kinds of research designs all the way from cost to the effort and the time required to the kind of output that they can produce. I'm telling you all of this because these are all real factors which affect your ability to be able to use research for the advantage that you want, for the ability to be able to make decisions on the basis of research. That's the reason why you need research. And therefore it is important to know at least on a top line level, what are the different possibilities with each of the research design approaches and what is the uh, difficulty involved with each one of them. And even if you are hiring an external agency for the purpose of conducting the research, the ultimate responsibility of the output is yours. You are the one who's going to pay for it and you are the one who's going to use the findings from the research for making your own decisions. And therefore, knowing enough about research design is something which is extremely important. And there are other kinds of research design like experimental, longitudinal, observational, and I have details about those in, in the document. Uh, there are some brands who use certain kinds of research extensively. So do check out the document. And that brings me to the end of today's video. If you liked what I shared, please hit the like button. If you have any thoughts or comments, please share them in the comment section below. And please do subscribe to my channel. There is a lot more interesting content coming up. So do subscribe so that you are informed about the new content that I post. And thank you for watching the business of marketing. I'll see you soon in my next video.